Hello, I'm back with another episode of Second City Wrestling, SCW. I'm local to Global in Chicago, Great Lakes area on TW9, where you left us off last. Um, we managed to sign Colt Cabana, which is one of the objectives of this save. I was amazed that we managed to sign him so quickly into the save. I'm not complaining. Our other big ones that we want to sign are Sky Blue and CM Punk, but obviously CM Punk is probably not going to happen when it comes to him being a wrestler. Maybe we can get him as a, a road agent or a colour commentator down the line. Um, talking of colour commentators, Colt Cabana, is he any good as a colour commentator? Uh, so look, colour commentator, he's not too bad. So him and Cliff Compton can be the commentary team. We can have Cliff Compton and Colt Cabana. We'll just leave it as them two for now. So not too bad. We could do with a play-by-play. -play. Um, maybe I'll think about bringing somebody in. We don't need to though. Um, but yeah, so Colt Cabana's managed to come into it. And then if we look at the show history on here, we had this is kicking off two thousand and five. In we had a SCW Lost Cause show, and we managed to get a thirty-three rating and one hundred eighteen people. Um, the main event was Frontman Ja defeating Simon Dean, I think, unless I've got this completely the wrong way round. Actually, no, I don't think it was Heather Reckless. Oh, no, it was Heather Reckless. Heather Reckless defeating Tootie Lim, kind of pushing Heather Reckless. So she's had a few main events. Um, and then, so basically the next show that we had was SCW Inevitability. Got a 34 rating and 120 people turned up, so that's on the up. And then the best uh, match was uh, Na Nevia defeating Mickey Knuckles. Got a 40 rating, which is pretty good for a women's match. So, yeah, so we're doing well. We haven't got any champions yet. We have got titles, but we haven't decided. I haven't decided what to do with that yet. Give me some suggestions. Maybe I'm, I might crown a champion today. We haven't really got many tag teams. So there's no point having a tag champions at the moment. Then again, maybe I could have the Killers as the tag champions and they could just be my like, like my Road Warriors just destroying everybody. I could probably bring in local wrestlers as jobbers to them and stuff like that. So we'll see how we get on with that. Um, let's have a look at the finances. So we managed to end February with 3,723. Um, 1,000 was from performance, 600 from ticket sales. And then 2,061 from sponsors and 322 from merchandise. We only lost about $54 for that month in the end, which is too bad. Actually, oh no, sorry, that's tax. I'm looking at the wrong way. Just ignore what I just said there. Um, so yeah, not too bad at all. Right, so we got a show coming up later. But I thought what I'd do first before I do any of that is... We'll just go through the roster and I'm thinking we'll look at attributes and we'll just see if there's anything here that we can that can stand out that we can use to our advantage. Um, Dynamo, the worker never holds back during matches, even on an important show. So that's good. So Ace Perry plays a good one supporting a good match. Lively, the worker is lively, upbeat individual, has positive natural impact on the backstage environment, which is good. Um, noted comedy match performer. Plays comedy well, plays swagger well, plays Weasley underdog well. Risk taker, so that's good. Oh no, risk taker. The worker is willing to take crazy and stunt bumps, so that's good. So maybe like we could have him in a match. Um, and then basically just, if he's willing to do stunts, we could just push the envelope with our matches with him and hopefully he'll, he'll, he'll come good for us. Um, a Steel, we won't be too bothered about, so we'll leave that one. So we've got Alice Alice Crowley, who I want as my... So I'm thinking Alice Crowley, or Crawley, whatever her name is. Crow, Crowley, Crowley. We're going to say Crowley. So Alice Crowley, I want her as basically my... I mean, I haven't got baby face or heels, but I'm thinking she could be my baby face type of... Um, superstar women's wrestler and then what we could have is we could have Heather Reckless as the heel equivalent of her basically is like the top heel women's wrestler 
So she plays better as a baby face. She doesn't do comedy. She doesn't. She can't play dominant. She can't play legitimate. So that's not necessarily good. But we'll see. Let's have a look at um, Atticia's Koga. Amazing heel. Better as a heel. Can't play comedy. Can't play dominant. Can't play legitimate. Daredevil. So Daredevil means um, the worker is always willing to take crazy and stunt bumps. So I'm thinking maybe we'd have. I think the next show we do. I think maybe what we could do is have a stunt match with Alice Koga and Alice and Ace Perry maybe um, deathmatch specialist deathmatch wrestler mercenary the worker is only interested in their own career and making as much money and gain as many, much success as possible so I, I can understand that to a point plays mysterious, mysterious occult well um, let's move on so there's no attributes for Bradley Prescott the fourth which I don't think that's a good thing um, uh, Bastard Cassidy plays badass well and is professional so the worker is a true pro and always act as such has a mildly positive natural impact on the backstage environment okay let's have a look at Cheech then so Cheech is better as a heel can't play badass dominant or off our feet unstable is fearless so the worker is willing to take crazy and stunt bumps as well relatively smart about turning them down when they're not appropriate such as blowing them on minor shows when nobody's watching okay so he's willing to do bumps as well crazy bumps as well but only um in certain he wouldn't do it on like a throwaway event or something so uh people's person so the per the worker gets on absolutely sorry let me start again the worker gets on with absolutely everyone, has a major positive natural impact on the backstage environment. So that's really good. So maybe he goes like a morale officer. If uh, if maybe I'll look, I'll look at that. Maybe he is a soft drugs user, unfortunately. Um, what's this one mean here? Yeah, so he has had past addiction issues. Clayton Gaines, let's see if there's anything that stands out with him. He does play badass well. So other than that, nothing really major. Cliff Compton, better as a heel, nothing really there. Let's have a look at Colt Cabana. So amazing baby face, better as a baby face. Can't play bad badass, dominant, mysterious, occult. Can't play offbeat or unstable. Comedy match worker, easy to do business with. So this worker is easy to do business with and will generally agree to put anybody over without hesitation unless it's somebody who is obviously very beneath them. That's a bit contradicting then, isn't it? Given performer, this worker is kindly uh, sorry. This worker has a kindly tendency to shine up lesser performers, making them a lot better than they are in improving the match, which is good. Uh, heavy social media user. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Depends. People person. We've already looked at. Plays quite a few well. Storyteller. The worker is well known to be one of the uh, wrestling's greatest. Sorry. Re yeah, let me start this again. I'm getting my words moved up today. This worker is well known to be one of the wrestling's great storytellers and has an increased chance of entertaining people backstage with tales. So somebody who is generally a good egg who will keep morale up and basically that. So another one that might be good as a morale officer. Um, tag team specialist. If this worker is used in a tag team that has at least 15 experience and does not have negative chemi uh, chemistry, the team gets a special performance bonus um top of chemistry bonus so i think him and ace steel are in a tag team but for some reason they're not on the tag team thing so let's just check maybe ace steel is not available as a wrestler for some reason we've got desperate measures okay or well, at least we've got one more tag team um let's just check ace steel again i don't think he is a, a worker i think he's just a, a road agent so manager road agent can we can we talk to him about coming out of retirement no nah, he doesn't want to that's a shame right so we can't do second city saints tag team right let's move on so we've got cornelius crummels i think he's one i brought in recently i don't think he's wrestled for us yet plays a good heel uh, plays comedy well so maybe him, him versus colt commander might be in a comedy match might be quite good gimmicky cartoonish well plays offbeat unstable well plays swagger well so he plays a lot of different roles well is professional tag team specialist hmm. i wonder what do you reckon everyone do you reckon we've, we've got a new tag team of colt cabana uh oh sorry apologize if that just blew your ears um bear with me while i fix that there we go 
Right, so we go Conquer Banner, Cornelius, and then we'll just get, we'll just see what they say. Too Delicious, there you go. We've got a new superstar tag team in Too Delicious. They'll be making their debut soon. I mean, Colt Cabana is probably better as a single star, but at least we've got that down the road if we wanted to. Right, let's keep on looking at these. So we've got Davey Bang. Um, he's lively. That's about it. He's tag team specialist as well. Eli Isom. Um, nothing really stands out from him. Flip Kendrick. Better as a baby face. Dynamo, we haven't seen that one before. Dynamo, this worker never holds back during matches. Even oh, I've seen that. I have heard. That. I have read that one before. Sorry. Play suave, well, relaxed. So this worker is very chilled and easy to get on with. Probably smoking the uh, good stuff. Um, has a mildly positive negative. Sorry, has a mildly positive natural impact on the backstage environment as long as they do not have negativity morale. Okay, let's have a look at front manager. Amazing heel, better as a heel, can't play mysterious or occult, creative. What's that? Uh, maybe he'd be good as part of the creative team then. Um, the worker is pretty creative and is slightly more likely to come up with new spots, gimmick ideas. Okay, so let's have a look at the creative team. I reckon we could probably add him to the creative team maybe. Uh, which one is it? Booking skill. No, no, no. Right, okay. So we've only got him available, unfortunately. So let's reset. Search. Yeah, so we can't just add whoever we want, which is annoying. Um, Can we ask him? To, is there a way we can ask him? Right, let's have a look. Front man, front man jar. There we go. Talk to worker. So... Um, no. By the looks of it, uh, steroids, no. Just reading quietly, sorry. Um, no, there's no way of ask, asking him to move. Uh, um, ask him to be part of the creative team, which is a shame. Right, another thing I watched, I learned from watching Stomp, um, Curb Stomp City, sorry. Um, if you haven't watched him already, he's doing a really good creative promotion, um, local to global promotion series at the moment. I recommend him. Um, and he did say that basically ask them to get in better shape adds to their star uh, quality or whatever it's called. Um, so we've asked him to basically become more muscular and Frontman Jar has taken your suggestion on board and begun to proceed process of change in shape. There you go. So offline, I'm going to get everybody to, to get in better shape. And then we'll see how, how that goes. Um, let's just carry on. See if we've missed anything. Positive outlook. The worker is known as always having a positive outlook, which is good to hear. Driven. The worker is extremely focused about having the best career possible. They have no natural impact on the backstage environment. So he could be somebody that we could build um the promotion on because he's a really good talker which is important in wrestling so that's good um let's have a look at this one shoot from the shoots from the lip i thought it'd be shoot from the hip okay when working an angle without a script this worker has a much higher chance than normal of receiving a boat ah, okay so we should never script his promos okay none for golden dragon which is disappointing here we go one of my one of my boys gringo loco um, age is just a number. This worker loses their skill at a slower rate than normal during their decline phase. So that's really good to hear. Um, again, we can't uh, daredevil. Easy to do business with. Easy, um, easy to do business with. Sorry, giving performer hot new move. This worker recently invented a new move or a spot that everybody is talking about. They get a bonus for their performance every match. So we need to put him in every show. I reckon. And then professional will risk injury, so we might have to be careful about that. Uh, Heather Reckless, which is, like I said, one of the women I want to push. Um, she's only 25 years old. She's a little bit older than Alice um, Crowley, but I still think she's pretty good. Daredevil doesn't count as a mini, so this worker does not count as a, being a mini worker, even though their height means that they should. Lifelong underdog. This worker is so naturally suited to the role of human punching bag. 
that their fans expect to see him yeah. physically but lose two opponents that are more than 30 pounds heavier than her um hurt them hold on let me start again um loses two opponents who are more than 30 pounds heavier hurt them for a less than less as rock that didn't make any sense whatsoever okay i apologize if you had to just put up with that so we've got we've got a sort of as a heel but she's a baby face even though i haven't got any set roles but she does seem to be better as a baby face so maybe in the long run she'll be a baby face so maybe we'll have her and alice Cro uh, crowley as the two women baby face workers the main ones um we've got this guy here isaiah rona uh plays about as well will risk injury jay bradley nothing really significant there uh noted comedy match performer okay so maybe I think maybe Jimmy Yang versus Colt Cabana in a comedy match at the next show, or maybe we could have we could have Paul, uh, Colt and Cornelius versus Jimmy Yang, and there was another was it Gringo Loco? No, he can't play comedy. Um, there was another comedy match worker, and I'll, I'll have a look offline. So one hundred percent heel. So this guy can never be a babyface. No comedy matches at all, so we can never put him in a comedy match. And then we've got Joshua Bishop, also can't play comedy. Deathmatch wrestler, fearless. So this worker's willing to take crazy stunt runs we've read before. Sorry, I thought it was new. And then JT Dunn, former drinker, which is a shame. Former hard drug user, former soft drug user. So we have got to worry about him becoming... Um, the rails again the only thing they've got for lee johnson is he is professional lord crow lord crew sorry um daredevil deathmatch wrestler heavy social media user plays badass heel plays legitimate well professional and then you've got mad dog conley's tag team partner who can't do comedy or weasley underdog chain specialist okay this worker is a specialist at matches where the setup involves a chain or a strap and gets a bonus Okay, that's good to know. Deathmatch wrestler. Dynamo, this worker never holds back during matches, even on important shows. Easy to do business with. Fearless. High pain threshold. So this worker is a high pain, high pain threshold. And so the penalties that are normally incurred for working while carrying an injury are lessened. Um, so in my head at the moment, I've got Colt. I've got a tag team comedy match involving Cornelius Crummles, Colt Cabana and Jimmy Yang and somebody else. And then I think maybe um, we could have Mad Dog commonly in a signals match, in a chain match. Um, maybe we'll see somebody else is also a chain spe chain match specialist, but we'll see. We've got Malcolm Monroe the third, which is a bit of a pet project for me. Um, he can't play badass, can't play dominant, death match wrestler, fearless, high pain threshold, plays swagger well, plays Weezy Dog and Dog well. So I think maybe Mad Dog Monroe might be the one that goes against it was Lord Crew that's no it wasn't it was Mad it was um Mad Dog Collins a chain yeah chain specialist so yeah so unless somebody else comes up as a chain specialist I think we'll have Mal Malcolm Monroe the third versus um, Mad Dog Colony and then we've got Matt Cross who plays better as a baby face giving performer loves the business so that one's a new one. When, ele when elevating contract offers, the worker places a lot of value on how happy they would be in the company rather than just looking at the money, which is good. So that's not too bad. Relax, straight edge. He'd be a good influence on JT Dunn. Right, Mickey Knuckles, better as a heel. Deathmatch wrestler, plays bad as well. I think that's the key ones there. Nate Webb, can't do comedy, dominant or legit. Deathmatch wrestler, fearless. No comedy matches. Okay. Uh, professional for Navia. Nick Dinsmore. He can't play badass. Dominal swagger. Can't play Weasley Underdog. Former hard drug user. Former soft drug user. Former steroid user. Plays comedy well. Ray Lynn. Nothing really stands out for her. She looks like a heel though. More than a baby face. Um, better as a heel. Can't do comedy. Can't do legit. Deathmatch wrestler. Fearless. I seem to have a lot of deathmatch wrestlers. Maybe maybe we need to make this more like a deathmatch promotion. I don't know. 
Um, no comedy matches. Play Swagger well. I think we've got a combination of comedy and deathmatch wrestlers at the moment. So maybe I might have to change my product. 100% badass. So, no, babyface. I apologise. Um, another notable comedy match wrestler. Sean Davari, 100% heel. Can't play legitimate. Easy to do business with. Fitness fanatic. So this worker is less likely to become out of shape than normal and better. I'm sorry, and is better able to achieve and keep a toned or muscular physique. So has he got a muscly physique? I know in real life he has. Let's see what it says here. Uh, physical. No, we don't need it. He's in good condition. Right. He's only a road agent anyway, so let's have a look at Simon Dean. Driven, plays comedy well. So maybe Simon Dean we can put in that match in the tag team match with Jimmy Young. Um, Tootie Lynn, better as a baby face, even though she's a she's in like a heel stable at the moment. Gymnastic background. So this worker is particularly strong gymnastic background and so the hidden caps on their athleticism, aerial and flashiness skills will always be higher than normal. So that's good. So she might be um, uh, a good babyface wrestler as well. So we've got like three female potentially babyface wrestlers and I think we've got like two or three maybe heel ones. So Vita Von Star is better as a heel. Nothing else really stands out. So yeah, so that's the roster done. So what I'm going to do now then is I'm going to fast forward and I'll be back in a sec and we'll start the first show of the episode. I hope you enjoyed me going through all that. Let me know in the comment section if you don't like things like that. I kind of did it because I saw I was I was intrigued when I was interested and entertained when Curb Stomp City did it. So I thought I'd do it for mine. If you don't like it, let me know and I'll be back in a sec. Right, we're back. I forgot to do it offline. Um, so what I'm going to do now very quickly is I'm going to speak to the workers, see if they'll get in better shape. Um, so he is willing to do it. I think literally they all do it, I think, pretty much. Um, talk to worker, physical, uh, more muscular. Yep, so... I think, like I said, everybody else, everybody so far is willing to do it, but we might come across somebody who isn't eventually. No, he's not interested. There you go. Lose weight? No, okay. Um, so he is the first one to reject us. Let's see if he's willing to get in better shape. Yep. So, so far, everybody other than Atisius. Hoga has rejected. Right, he could do with definitely getting in better shape. I'm not really interested in working on changing my body shape at this point in my career. Well, that's annoying. Uh, lose weight? I'm not really interested in changing my... Okay. Alright, let's see if Cheech will do it. Nope. Nope. So what I'm trying to do is if they don't want to get more muscular, I'm going to at least ask him to lose weight. So I th I'm assuming he's already um, ripped. Yeah, so he's already ripped. We don't need to worry about Cliff Compton. Right, let's have a look. See if we can get Colt Cabana in better shape. Nope. Nope. Okay. That's fine. Let's try Cornelius Crummels, who looks like um, cosplay Sami Zayn in that photo. Uh, physical, right. Nope, he's not interested. Right, so he's not interested in getting in better shape or losing weight. He's not interested either. We're hitting a brick wall at the moment. Try Eli. Yep, so he's willing to do it. That's good. Let's see. Kendrick. See if he'll do it. Nope. Already done front man jar. Now we'll try Golden Dragon. Nope. Gringo Loco. Gringo Loco, he's not the fattest guy in the world but he probably could do with it getting in better shape prolong his career 
No. No. Okay, so he's not interested in getting better shape or losing weight. Let's try Heather Reckless, who is toned. So, let's see how we get on. No, she's not interested. Okay. Uh, I feel bad asking a woman to get in better shape. I feel like it's a very sexist thing to do. Oh, that's good. Isaiah Broner is taking it on board. Right, so he's just recently gone from average to flabby, so we definitely need to get him to lose some weight. No, nope, sorry, I, I cannot. All workers are um, limited to one shape change every two years. Ah, oh, that's annoying. Should we get him to try and... Is that the same for losing weight? Ah, great. So he's flabby. And we can't do anything about it. Jimmy Yang has took it on board, which is really positive to hear because he's an older gentleman. Um, so they're less likely to do it. No, Josh Prohibition is not interested. Um, neither is Josh uh, Bishop. <clears throat> Sorry if my voice sounds a bit croaky, I do apologise. It's not the nicest to hear at times. Yep, yeah, JT Dunn is happy to get in better shape. Not really interested in change. Okay. Right, Lord Crew. Let's see if they'll do it. Yep, yeah, so he's willing to do it. Um So is Mad Doc Conley. Have I just... Oh, no. Oh, no. I've just... That... I've just... Um... I've just bloody... Oh, i just clicked on the steroid one. Great. So Malcolm Monroe might get addicted to being on steroids cause, and it's all my fault. I instigated it. I Vince mcmahon him. Yep, Matt Cross is willing to get in better shape. Let's have a look and see if Mickey Knuckles will do it. No. No, she's not willing to do either. I'm sorry for asking you that, Mickey. I do apologise. I am a scumbag. No. Oh, there you go. Navia has taken it on board, which is good. She's obviously wants to be a superstar. Nick Dinsmore's willing to take it on board as well. Right, not many left now. Okay, so she she did agree to it. I just clicked on it too many times. Um, yep, he's he's willing to get in better shape. Sean Davari is ripped, so there's no we don't need to ask him to do it. Yep. Simon Dean is willing to get in better shape. Right, Tu Elin is toned, so she is willing to get more muscular, which is good. And then last one, Vita von Star. She is not interested. Okay. Right, but that's not too bad. We've got quite a lot of wrestlers there willing to get in better shape. Um, we've got 5,518 available now. We'll see what that is like after this next show. Hopefully, we'll just go through this and then I'll book the show offline and then I'll come back. Oh, balls. Oh, I've done it again. What's going on with my mouse? There we go, right. Um, Isa Broner helped create a fun and relaxed atmosphere backstage after finding a discarded karaoke machine. Okay. Um, training. Training. Done. I'm really annoyed because my mouse um, on, my key, on my laptop, for some reason, on this game, plays up. So, for convenience, Logan Square Auditorium. I don't know how many that how much of that's gonna cost us now. I can't go back, can I? Alter event details, no. Ah, oh, this is annoying. 
Uh, well, we're just going to have to get on with it. Right, so not much I can do about it now. Um, and I'll see you in a sec. Right, we're back for the first show of the episode. Sorry, it took so long to get to this point, but that these things happen. Um, so what I decided to do was do a singles match, um, a chain, a dog collar match between um, Mad Dog Conley and Malcolm Monroe the Third. Um, Mad Dog won, and um, it got thirty four for the segment, forty three for the wrestling. Um, Mad Dog Conley was the better performer with a forty six. Um, the mat, the the bolt, the bolt, the bolt, bolt. I, I always get this wrong. I'm going to call it bolt, bout, the bout. Dragged in the middle with lack of flow being noticeable. The match went on a little too long, so maybe I should have done it for. I did it for twenty minutes. Um, we also got Mad Dog and Malcolm Moreau to take a stunt bump as well. Um, let's just quickly read this. I want to see if we got a bonus because of the dirt sheet. Yeah, that's the one, isn't it? Yeah, got a bonus for being motivated by your pre-show inspirational speech. Um, Mad Dog Conley was penalised for inconsistency. Mad, yeah, Mad Dog Conley was penalised for poor gimme. So that's not good. Um, yeah, so Dog Collar match doesn't count. Doesn't count. But for some reason, the match types I have on here, they didn't have a normal like chain match or anything like that. So I need to look at that. Anyway, right. Onwards and upwards. Um, we then did a comedy relief angle with Colt Cabana. Got a 44 rating. Um, Colt Cabana struggled when going off script, so I'm surprised by that. But okay. Um, there we go. Right, and then in a, in a tag team match, um, comedy match, we had two delicious, which is Colt Cabana and Cornelius um, Crummels versus Jimmy Yang and Simon Dean. And... Um, Two Delicious won the match when Cornelius Crummles pinned Jimmy, Lang, Jimmy Yang with the great expectation. The segment got a 34. Crowd was kind of into it with a 21. 39 for the wrestling. Um, and then Colt Cabana was the standout performer in the match. Um, the match went on far too long considering it was a comedy book. So maybe next time I need to do less minutes of this match. But it did help by giving the crowd a breather after the barbaric match we just had before. And then we did a promo after the match with Lee Johnson, who's in a storyline with Jimmy Yang, um, cutting a promo, which was scripted, got 21. The angle got the crowd hotter. And then in the main event, we had Heather Reckless defeating Alice Crawley in a cage match um, with the calf crusher. The segment got 30, 22 for the crowd rating, 35 for the wrestling, and Heather Reckless was slightly better. There seemed to be a lack of flow to the match when, when that took away from the drama. Um, but yeah, everything else was alright. So let's see how the show did. We've increased our popularity in one region. Overall rating of 32, and 126 people turned up. So I think that was, I think it might be the biggest crowd we've done so far. Um, both both the, the first two matches of the night were the better ones out a lot. Um, the best thing of the whole show was the Colt Cabana comedy skit. Right, let's see if my mouse doesn't play it this time. Right, address the locker room. So we'll go Colt Cabana. It's a good example. And then um, have a reckless. Oh, for God's sake, I didn't click on it. Right, okay. Oh. There we go. Right, so we're still 14 in Great Lakes. So our popularity hasn't proved. Um, media Scrum. I need to really sort out this. Let me know in the comment section how I can fix this on my keyboard, on my laptop, mouse, touchpad. It's very annoying. Right, we'll have a quick look at the financial side of things. So we didn't lose that much money from the last show. Can we? Would it tell us in show history? Right, let's have a look. Show history. So this was the last show we just did. It doesn't tell us. Um, no, it won't tell us anything that we want to know about the financial side of things. Let's have a look at the finances anyway. There we go, finances. Right. 
So this month we've made 1,131 for performance, 630 from ticket sales, 1,947 from sponsors, 296 pounds from the merchandise, slightly less than last month. Um, and then workers cost us just over a grand. 285, 284 for the show cost, 75 for marketing, production 235. We didn't get taxed so far, but we probably will. They're not too bad, but we're still doing well financially. Right, so we haven't got another show for a while. So as you know the score, I'll be back in with the next show. Right, we're back with the next show. Um, just check these inbox items. So Sky Blue unfortunately extends her deal uh, on an exclusive written contract. So we won't be getting her in for a while. Heather Reckless got injured. Um, she's got a strained bicep. Um, but doesn't look like it's going to be too bad. Obviously, yeah. Um, Jessica Havoc extends deal with TNA. There we go. So, first, but one to get the body type change. Um, so he's gone from tone to muscular, which will really help with his star quality. Right. Um, yeah, so let's crack on with the next show. Oh, now let's just check the finances. 6,815, so we're doing well. We're slightly making money each month, which is really good. That's what we want. We want. We don't want to be in the red. Let's just quickly look at the finance, actually. So 1,741, sorry, 1,741 for the performance. Sponsors about the same as well. Merchandise, 161. So that's that. Right. Um... I think this show is going to be a show where we have all new champions. So that is the focus for this show coming up. I hope to God, let me click on it once. Oh, thank God for that. Right, okay. Um, oh, so this is the one we usually use anyway. So it automatically picked that one, the last show. So we didn't, didn't spend loads of money on a venue. There was no pre-show pre -show instance, which is good. Booking team meeting. So we've got 55 altogether. Hold on. After all the bonus penalties were applied, the meeting um, generated a total of 55 CE. So we'll leave it for now. We'll just keep that stored up for now. Locker room incidents. Right. Um, Atticius Koga has gotten a lot of heat with the rest of the locker room due to his recent attitude. And there are signs that he's also into a very bad situation right okay so we'll just suspend him i don't care if he's unhappy oh no alice Crow crawley's unhappy that's annoying um sean davari training and then gringo loco training alice crawley was in a delightful mood and brought some great positive vibes to the locker room that's good uh we don't need to do anything there Right then, I'll see you in a second with the next show. Right, we're back, and this is going to be basically where we have all new champions on this show. We crown all new champions. So this, these will be the first ever Second City wrestling champions. Um, so we had Nav uh, Nevia um, defeating Tootie Lin in a match with um, German Suplex. The match was designed to tell a specific story and Nevia wins the SCW women's title. The second lot, 38, 20 uh, for the crowd rating, 36 for the wrestling, and uh, Nevia with a 43 in ring performance. We also specifically um, kept two Elin strong as well. So hopefully, from the back of this, she'll go on and become a bit of a star down the road. And then to ruin the celebrations, Heather Reckless attacked uh, Nevia after the match. Got a 24 rating for the segment. And the storyline continues between them two. Um, the Killers defeated the tag team of the Golden Gods, which is um, the Golden Dragon, I think his name is, or something like that, and um, um, Gringo Loco. So... Golden Dragon, there you go. Golden Dragon. So did I just say Golden Dragons? I meant Golden Gods, which is Golden Dragon, Gringo Loco. I apologise. Right. 
So we set the match up to be a car crash because Gringo Loco is a bit of a nutter. Um, Golden Lo Golden Dragon is a bit of a high flyer. And then you've got the two deathmatch brawlers um, that are willing to do stunt bumps and things like that. So, yeah, so the killers won when Mad Dog Connolly pinned Golden Dragon um, for the crazy moves and dangerous bumps. The um, Gringo Loco did take a crazy bump as well. Um, the killers are the new SCW Tag Team Champions. Um, Gringo Loco was head and shoulders above everyone else. So he got a 62, so we definitely could probably do with pushing him a bit higher than in a tag team with Golden Dragon. I think Golden Dragon was dragging him down, no pun intended. Um, the second one got a 52, 25 for the crowd, 42 for the wrestling. Um, but yeah, quite very good. So Gringo Lowe could benefit from having a new move. Golden Dragon was a bit rusty, so maybe he'll get better over time. The crowd was buzzing after this match as well. And then the we did like a promo battle between Colt Cabana and Frontman Jar. Uh, Jay? Jar? Frontman Jar. Got 54 right in. Um, Frontman Jar was superb, working without a script. He had the crowd in the palm of his hand the entire time. And then in the main event for the SCW Heavyweight title, we had a surprise win for Frontman Jar, defeating Colt Cabana. Um... We basically got the put the match to steal the show. It got a segment of 39, 25 for the crowd, 37 for wrestling. Um, Frontman Jar is not the best worker in the world, but he is a star as far as I'm concerned. Um, and to end the show, we had a celebration of Frontman Jar working the crowd, say, you know, for celebrating with the title. Got a 46 rating, which I think was probably our best. I oh, know it wasn't. Um, but yeah, the show increased our popularity in one region. We got a 43 rating and 131 people turned up. So the crowds are getting slightly bigger each time, which is good. Um, standout match was probably the uh, Killers defeating the Golden Gods. And then the best segment of the show was the Frontman Jar and Colt Cabana promo bar. So very good second show for the episode. We're just going to praise him for being a, Colt Cabana for being a good uh, example. And then Gringo Loco as well. Great performance. And then final. Oh, it's happened again. So annoying. There we go. Right, we're up to a 15 and popularity. Get in. Go on. We're nearly, nearly, um, we're nearly gone from insignificant to tiny. We're not far away now. It's annoying though that my mouse pad keeps doing that. Sorry, there we go. It'll come back in a second, hopefully. There we go. Thank God for that. I thought I crashed it then. I got told sometimes when your mouse pad is playing up, if you press the left and right key, right mouse pad at the same time, it works and it corrects it. So I just tried to do that. Right, so we've got 6,084 available. So I don't think we lost that much that last show. Annoyingly, I won't know. Um, let's have a look at finances. We might be able to tell us a bit more there. So performance 1,010, um, 655 for ticket sales, sponsors 1,866, 307 for merchandise, um, but yeah, not too, not too bad. Right then, we'll do one more show and then I've got to call it a day because um, my ribs are hurting for some reason. So I'm going to do one more show for you and then I'm going to call it a day. Um, and then, yeah, anyway, I'm rambling on for no reason. I'll be back in a sec for the next show. Right, we're back for the final show of the episode. Let's just go through the inbox items. So, Rhino has left TNA. I think Rhino is... Is he originally from Great Lakes? He is. Okay, £240 a show. Okay, I think we should go for it. Right. Um, I just need to do this. And then hope for the best. Um, due to my decline, okay. Um, Benson A shows only. Right, so after this show, hopefully moving forward, we'll have Rhino. I never even thought about Rhino, if I was honest with you. Uh, Mustafa Ali hired by MMVJ. Was he available? Is he available? Can we... We can't. He's too expensive. That's the reason why we can't hire him. 
Sharp Boy to retire, AWG financial warning. So we've had Cheech has now gone from tone to average. I don't know if that's good or bad. Um, Calvin Tankman has changed his style, but we haven't got him. Um, Nick Dinswell to retire as well. Jay Bradley leaving NWA. Jimmy Yang um, has gone from toned to muscular. Same for, oh, so Matt Cross has gone from muscular to ripped. And then uh, Navier has gone from average to toned. And uh, Nick Dinsmore has done, has bulked down a bit. So that is that. Let's have a look at the finances. We've got 8,000 now. So we're making a couple of grand a month, basically, by the looks of it. Or just over a thousand pound, one thousand four hundred. It looks, it looks like it, um, which is good. One thousand five hundred seventy for performance. Sponsors about the same. Merchandise one hundred forty seven dollars. Right then. Um, oh, I need to delete these inbox items first. Right, that's that. So we're gonna skip forward to the next show now. Coming up. Let's pick that one as the arena um, board meeting. So we've now got, we've got 185 creative energy, but I'm still gonna leave it for now. I wanna build it up a bit first. Locker room instance, Cheech brought pizza for the entire locker room. Ace Perry helped create a relaxed atmosphere backstage for finding a discarded karaoke machine. Um, the word backstage, Ace Perry and Lil Cruz have been getting on particularly well lately, which is good. Simon Dean has been talking to Brian Gorey a lot recently, seems to be having some degree of influence over his behaviour. Training, training, boom, let's go. We can't inspire, so we'll just leave it. Right, then, I'm going to do this live. Um, what I've been doing before is just been booking it offline and then come into it. But I'm just going to book this one live for you lot. Let me know in the comments section if you don't like that. Um, what we're going to do first is we're going to, because Nick Dinsmore's going to retire soon, so we don't really need to worry about him. I'm going to give Flip Kendrick a chance, see how he does. So we'll go 17 minutes. We'll have Flip win. Open match. Done. Okay, I uh, just need to knock that down. And then we'll do an angle afterwards with um, Flip Kendrick attacking Nick Dinsmore after the match. Kendrick attacks Dinsmore. That's that. And then uh, we'll go, we'll have a women's match. So, women's champion is um, Navia. Navia. So, we'll have her defend a title maybe next show. We'll have Alice Crawley, who I really was considering actually putting the title on. We'll put her against Tootie Lynn. I quite like Tootie Lynn, to be honest. See if them two can have a good match. We'll go... 17 minutes we'll leave it to the ai to decide and then we'll go um lee johnson we'll have him against um gringo loco two of our probably our best workers and we'll go um steal the show open match call out match that ah balls okay so we can't go that long with 15 minutes and then we'll have um we'll have jimmy yang attacking lee johnson after the match because they're in the storyline so it keeps that going advance the storyline yang it sounds so wrong when I when I type this. Young attacks Johnson. Put your jokes there, everybody. They're there for you to do. Right, so we've got... We'll do one more match. Um, and we'll go... Um, we'll go 
Colt Cabana versus who should we have him against? I kind of want to put him in a comedy. No, we won't. We won't. We'll do Josh Eurobisher. So we've got 18 minutes. We'll give Colt the win. Um, storytelling, open match. We will keep Joshua Bishop strong. Uh, right, okay, I just need to change this. Right, we're ready to go, everyone. Like that. So the first match of the show is Flip Kendrick, who defeated Nick Dinsmore in 15 minutes with the uh, backdrop into a sit-down face buster. It got the it got a thirty nine rating for the segment, thirty five for the wrestling, um, and Flip Kendrick was slightly better. And then the Anvil Atlas didn't do particularly well; only got a nineteen. Um, Alice Crawley defeated Tootie Lin by pinfall, got a twenty nine for the segment. The crowd wasn't that into it, sadly. Wrestling got wrestling rating was thirty four. Seemed to be a lack of flow in the match. And um, both workers got 34 rating, but they, yeah, wasn't uh, the best match. Right. And then Gringo Loco defeated Lee Johnson with the Frog Splash. Um, it was a match to go out and steal the show. Got 51 for the segment, 33 for the crowd, 48 for the wrestling. Both workers, both wrestlers wrestled quite well. Um, Gringo Loco got 62 last match he was in, so maybe Lee Johnson dragged him down a bit. The road agent, um, Reed Bentley could have done a better job of the match, so maybe that didn't help either. Um, Jimmy Yang attacked Lee Johnson after the match, got a 32 rating. We need to get rid of that Reed as a road agent. He's not very good. Um, so, and then the main event, Colt Cabana defeated Joshua Bishop. Got a 33 for the segment, 26 for the crowd, 35 for the wrestling. Both wrestlers got the same rating of 35. Joshua Bishop seemed off his game. Really need to improve on my road agents if I can. So we've increased the popularity in one region. We got 39 for overall rating. And we got 136 people, which I think is the same as the last show. Best match was um, Ringo Loco defeating Lee Johnson. So we go Gringo Loco again. Hulk Cabana. Ah, there we go. Finally got to click on this without it skipping. Right, so we we got $680 from ticket sales, $141 from merchandise. Workers cost us a little bit more because we have four matches. So that was $1,120. $277 for show costs, $75 for marketing. Uh, overall loss of $651. So we're down to 7,294. Oh, we've gone up. Gone up again. We're going up um, after each ma after each show here. So that's really good. So we've gone to a 16 now. So hopefully, um, uh, hopefully next episode we'll go up to tiny size. Fingers crossed. But um, very enjoyable show. Um, I always enjoy booking these. I think it helps that I only do one a week when so when I was doing two a week. Um, Isa Broner is now a regular wrestler, changed his wrestling style. So we'll just quickly oh we don't need to look at finances, that's that really. So we made one thousand four hundred and one last month. So we're in profit. Hopefully we'll be in profit after this as well. But yeah, that's that really everyone. So I'll be back next week with another episode. Just gonna save this so I don't forget. Thank you for everyone that watched the second episode. It didn't obviously do as well as the first one, but that was expected. But it still did really, really well. And I really appreciate people just watching it. So I'm hoping you continue to watch the series. Um, and I hope this episode keeps you interested for the whole way through. Let me know in the comments section if you've got any advice in how I can make this this series more entertaining for you. If there's... Um, is there's a voice on playing the game itself let me know i'm always open to learning new things so let me know and i appreciate all the feedback so far people have been giving me and like i said i'll be back next monday with another episode enjoy the rest of your week all the best bye